Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin our today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel and it also helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So this will be our 18th part in our components and resultant series under statics. And what we have going on here is that we have to find the resultant for the three forces shown here. So when finding a resultant, all that means is that you're combining the amount of forces shown. In this case, we have three. So we're going to combine three forces into a single force. And the resultant between your forces, well, has to be somewhere in between the forces. So along this red arc here. If I end up with a resultant after my calculations, which shows something down in here, well, that's not between my three forces. So that cannot be correct. So the process that we're going to use, or I'm going to show here, is referred to as the rectangular component method, or sometimes it's also referred to as the triangular component method. It will not be the parallelogram method because usually that one takes a lot longer to do. So we're going to use the faster method here to find the resultant. So first step you want to do is that you want to isolate out each of your components. And what I'm going to show is a, a little bit of a drawn out portion here. The better you get with these types of problems, the faster you can work through them and a little bit of steps that you can skip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out each of these forces and isolate them along the X, Y components or X and Y uh, system here with their angles shown. And then we're going to look at them each by themselves. So there was the 300, there's the 200, and then there's the 400 force. So we're going to look at each one individually. And what we're going to do is that we are going to break up each component into its own component forces along the Y and X directions. So <clears throat> how do we do this? Well, we look at the individual force. In this case, we have 300 Newtons, which is acting up and to the right. That is 60 degrees off of the X axis. So the components for this 300 Newton in the X and Y direction have to be matching the general direction that the 300 is going. Well, the 300 is going up and to the right. So that means that my component of this in the Y direction has to be going upwards. And the component of this in the X direction has to be going to the right to match this up and to the right direction of the 300. OK, so what is actually happening here? So what forms here is a little force triangle. And this is where that triangular component method gets its name from. So what we have here is that we have something that looks like this, where this is my Fy, this is my Fx, and my 300. Now, the Fy and the Fx components have to originate from the same starting point as the 300, which is the origin of the coordinate system. And then here is my 60 degrees off of that x direction. Well, the fx is going to be directly along the x direction. And the fy is going to be directly along y. But what we can do is that we can copy and paste this fy, and we can form a right triangle here. So because we're not changing the overall orientation, we're not changing the overall magnitude of the Fy, so we can copy and we can paste it and form a right triangle here with my forces. So now I have this, where this angle between the X and Y is still 90 degrees. Well, because it's 90 degrees here. So I've formed a little force triangle. And what I can do is I can utilize this angle that's given with the 300 Newtons, and I can find the components of FX and FY using the right triangle rules of SOHCAHTOA, which is just using sine and cosine here. So my FY will be my magnitude of my force, which is 300 Newtons. And that will be multiplied by the sine of 60 degrees. Remember, sine is dealing with the opposite, and Fy is opposite the angle. So this pops out to be 259.8 newtons in that upward direction. And then my Fx will be the same kind of equation here, 300 newtons for my force. And this time, the Fx is touching the angle. It is adjacent to that angle of 60 degrees, so we're going to use cosine of 60 degrees, and 300 newtons times the cosine of 60 is 150 newtons to the right. Make sure you have your arrow directions correct because that's going to be important later. So what I have done is that I have turned this 300 newtons into 259.8 newtons in the upper direction and 150 newtons in the, in the x direction. And it's just um, proportioning out this 300 into the F and X, or the FY and FX directions. 
So we're going to keep these numbers for later. And that's how we did it for the 300. And we're going to repeat that process for the 200 and the 400 Newton forces. So let's repeat that process. Just going to draw a division line here for the 200 Newtons, which is next, which is up and to the left here. And it's angled at 20 degrees off of the X. So throwing on my X and Y components here, since this 200 Newtons is going up and to the left, this has to be going upward. And my X will have to be going to the left here to match that general direction. So once again, what I have going on here is I'm going to have my FX here. I have my 200 over here. And then that's supposed to be perfectly straight. <laughs> So let's just do that. That's a little bit better. And then my FY there. And then I have my angle, which is 20 degrees, which was given. So once again, I'm going to copy and paste my FY to complete the triangle. And then I'm going to use my sine and cosine of my angle in conjunction with my 200 Newtons here to get my components in the F and Y or the FY and FX directions. Alrighty. So let's work on the FY. So this will be 200 Newtons since that's my force. And once again, the Fy is opposite to 20 degrees because the 20 degrees is off of the X. So this will be sine of 20 degrees, which 200 times the sine of 20 degrees gives me 68.4 Newtons in that upward direction. And then going with the Fx, once again, 200 Newtons. This time it will be cosine because the angle is off of the X that is adjacent. Cosine is dealing with adjacent. So 200 times the cosine of 20 gives me 187.9 Newtons to the left. And there are my orthogonal components of X and Y for my 200 Newtons. Now, as you're working through this first step here, this first process of splitting up these forces, you want to make sure that your answers make sense for each component. So looking at the 200 Newtons here, it is only 20 degrees off the X. So it is much closer to the X than it is to the Y since this would be 70 degrees. So a lot more of this 200, a larger proportion of this 200 Newtons is closer to the X direction. So we expect that their FX for the 200 would be larger than the FY one because, well, it's closer in degrees here. It's more horizontal than it is vertical. And looking at our values here, well, our FY is 68 and our FX is 187. So yeah, it's much larger than our FY because this angle is smaller. This 200 Newtons is more of a horizontal force than it is a vertical force. So that does make sense. That's just another little check that you can run as you're walking through here. All right, so we have one more force of 400. Once again, we are going to split this up into an X and Y component and it is up and to the left. So I will be upward for my FY and I will be to the left for my FX to match this general direction. Now, as I just said, with the 200 Newton, since it was at 20, well, look at the 400. It's at 10 degrees off of the Y. So I expect my FY to be much larger than my FX because this force is more of a vertical force than it is a horizontal force. So let's go ahead and let's complete our force triangle here. And you know what, give myself a little bit more room here since we have a lot of white space. So here is my 400. I have my FX down here, and I have my FY over here, and here is my 10 degrees. So since the angle is off the Y, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste my FX up here to form my triangle. So now I have something that looks like this. So let's go ahead and let's find what my FY and my FX components for the 400 Newtons are. Well, I'm gonna take my force of 400 Newtons, and now the Fy is adjacent to the angle. The angle is off of the Fy. So now I'm going to use cosine with the Fy. So it'd be cosine of 10 degrees. So 400 times cosine of 10 gives me 393.9 Newtons in that upward direction. So just keep in mind that the Fy is not always dealing with sine as the previous two Pro, or the previous two forces were because we had sine and sine for Fy. It just depends upon where that angle is being measured from. Since it is being measured from the Y, in this case, we will be dealing with cosine. So pretty much the direction where the angle is coming off of, that is what you would use cosine for because this little force triangle is dealing with the adjacent of cosine. So Fx would be 400 Newtons 
This time the angle is, or fx is opposite that angle. It is not touching the angle. So that would be sine for opposite. So 400 times the sine of 10, and we expect this to be much larger or much smaller than the Fy force. And it pops out to be 69.5 Newtons acting to the left. So once again, it came out to be much smaller. Well, because the 400 Newtons is more of a vertical force than a horizontal force. All right, so that is, all of that encapsulates the very first step that you would work. Now, as you get better and better, you don't have to draw out these little individual force diagrams here and split up the force and draw out the little triangles. You can just go straight to writing your equations and it makes things a lot faster. So what we have here is that we have split up our forces are three forces into six forces. And we have three in the FX and three in the Y directions. So we are going to use these forces that we have. And what we're gonna do is that we're gonna combine them in the each direction, in the X and Y direction. So we're gonna combine all our X forces together and we're going to combine all our Y forces together to get a single FY and a single FX force. So what we're going to do here is that we are just going to sum in those directions. So we are going to sum forces in the FY direction, and we're gonna take everything in the upward direction as a positive number, everything in the downward direction as a negative number. So this is where we're just going to gather up our forces. So for the FY, we have 259.8 in the upward direction, so it would be a positive 259.8. And for the 200, we have 68.4 Newtons in the upward direction. So once again, it'll be positive. And then lastly, we have 393.9, which is in the upward direction. So once again, it'll be positive. Make sure that you only include the Fy forces in your summation of Fy. So we had 259.8 upward, so it's positive. And then 68.4 in the upward direction. So once again, it's positive. And then 393.9 Newtons, once again, positive in the upper direction. And then we just add all them, all those up, which is 722.1 Newtons in that upper direction. So that is the combination of all my vertical forces. And then we're just going to repeat that process for forces in the X direction. And we're just going to take everything acting to the right as positive here. So what we have going on, if we look back and see our XX, FX forces, we have 150 to the right, so it's positive. 187.9 Newtons to the left, so that would be negative because it's to the left. And then 69.5 to the left, once again, negative. So writing out my equation, I would have a positive 150 acting to the right, minus off 187.9 to the left, and minus off 69.5 once again to the left. And this pops out to be minus 107.4 Newtons. So the negative sign here means, well, it's not going to the right, it's going to the left. So what we're going to do is just drop that minus sign and we're gonna add that leftward arrow. A positive 107 would have meant that it would act to the right, just like with the Fy. The positive 722.1 meant it was going upward. Since we got a negative sign here, that means it's going opposite my positive sign convention. So it is in fact going to the left. Okay, so these are now the forces I'm concerning myself with. And what we have going on is if I redraw my XY coordinate system here from the very beginning, we have something that looks like this now. And just imagine that these are perfectly straight lines. So there's my X, there's my Y, there's my original point all the forces are acting on and I'm going to apply my new Fy and Fx forces here. So I have 722.1 Newtons in the upward direction, and I have 107.4 Newtons acting to the left. So I've combined all my forces into these two single Fx and Fy forces. So just like before, I said the resultant has to be between your forces. Well, that means my resultant is going in that upward left direction because my FX and FY components are also going in the upward and left directions. So the result has to be between them. Okay, so how do we find this result? Well, it's gonna be kind of like the reverse what we did earlier where we took each force and then turned it into an FX and FY force. Well, now we have the FY and FX forces for my resultant. So we're kind of working backwards now, finding out 
my resultant force. So here would be my resultant hypotenuse for my force triangle. This would be my 107.4 newtons. And this would be my 722.1 newtons. Well, I'm just going to copy and I'm going to paste my Fy over here. And look, it makes a triangle. And then this angle here, which I'm just going to call alpha, would be this angle off of the x axis. So how do I find what my r is? Well, since this forms a right triangle here, I can just use Pythagorean theorem to find what r is. So r will always be this equation here, which would be the square root of your sum of your forces in the y squared plus the sum of your x forces squared. So let's fill in this equation here. So the summation of my y's is 722.1 newtons squared plus the summation of my x's, which is 107.4 squared. So this pops out to be 730 newtons in that upward left direction. So that's my answer for my resultant but we need to locate it. So we need to find out what our alpha angle is. Well, just use the right triangle here again. Well, we have the opposite and we have the adjacent sides. So instead of using sine and cosine, what we're going to use here is we're going to use tangent because we have the components of the x and y. So my alpha angle off of my x would just be the tangent inverse of my opposite, which is my 722.1 over my adjacent, which is the 107.4. And this would give me an angle of 81.5 degrees off of that x direction or that x axis as shown here. So my final answer will look like this if you draw it out. So there's my x, there's my y. My resultant will be acting on the same point, which was the origin. And it will be shown something like this, going in the upward left direction at 730 newtons at an angle of 81.5 degrees off of that x-axis as shown. And this would be considered the final answer here. So does that make sense that I would get that magnitude of or that direction of 81.5? Well, yes, it does, because look at my components. I have 722 in the vertical. 107 in the horizontal. So that means most of that resultant force is going to be vertical rather than horizontal because it's almost seven times as large. So that means that angle off of the X has to be pretty steep. And that makes sense that it would be closer to the Y than it is to the X just because of that component force is much larger than the 107. So this resultant force does make sense overall looking at my answers. And that's how you would complete this particular problem and finding the resultant between three forces. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to see more problems solve this variety, please check out the other videos on our channel. Also, if you haven't done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below, and subscribe to the channel because all of that does help us out. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day.